Prepare yourself. <clears throat> Nearer, my God, to Thee. Nearer to Thee. E'en though it be a cross that raiseth me. Still all my song shall be nearer, my God, to Thee. Nearer, my God, to Thee. Nearer to Thee. Though like the wanderer, the sun gone down, darkness be over me, my rest a stone. Yet in my dreams I'd be nearer, my God, to Thee, nearer. My God to thee, nearer to thee. There let the way appear, steps unto heaven. All that thou sendest me in mercies given. Angels to beckon me nearer, my God, to Thee, nearer, my God, to Thee, nearer to Thee. Then with my wa waking thoughts, Bright with thy praise, out of my stony griefs, Bethel I raise. So by my woes to be nearer, my God, to thee, nearer, my God. To thee, nearer to thee. Or if on joyful wing, cleaving the sky, sun, moon, and stars forgot, upward I fly. Still all my song shall be nearer, my God, to Thee, nearer, my God, to Thee, nearer to Thee. If you don't have one, I recommend you get one. Please, get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please follow me along, word for word, verse by verse, the scriptures that you and I will be looking at today. Follow me along. Check me out. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not scri uh, skipping a groove. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Okay? going to begin in Proverbs 27. <laughs> the, the thumbnail, if I'll be able to upload that thumbnail, if not, then don't worry about it. But I think that thumbnail that hopefully I'll be able to put on this video is very appropriate. That wicked individual that you'll see on that um thumbnail most of you are aware of who that is and that that's the face of a devil 
smiling at the devastation that is coming. What will become? What will become? Now, putting aside all the occultic, pagan nonsense that coincides with the New Year's thing, such as, you know, and, and with witchcraft kind of thing, the old man with the new child, and there's so many occultic things with that. There are. But the simple fact is, chronologically, tomorrow will be January 1st. Tomorrow we begin a new year. Okay? And, and the saying is, I, I believe the saying goes, Count your blessings one by one, and you will be amazed at what God has done. You know, I was talking about this with my wife a little bit earlier for this video, and, um, you know, we were looking back at all that our Lord has done for us this past year. And on a very serious note, I, I, want, to, I want to mention this. To every single one of you, who has prayed for us, who have helped us, those who do, and those who, ha who once did but do no longer. Thank you. Thank you to every single one of you who pray for us. Thank you to every single one of you who has ever helped us. There are those who went away, who I was sad to see go away, but turned out to be for the best. There are those I wish I had never come across, and glad they're gone. But through many, things have been sustained. Thank you. You know who you are. Thank you. Thank you so very much. And what will become? What will become? It's interesting because when you read Proverbs 27, turn to Proverbs 27, we're going to read verses 1 on to verse 6. We know what the future holds as the church of the living God. But we don't know what's going to happen today or tomorrow, do we? Isn't that strange in a way, when you think about it? What am I talking about? Well, Proverbs 27. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Nearer, my God, to thee, nearer to thee. See, we don't know the specifics of a day. For example, I or yourself, you can walk out the door of your house or wherever you live, and the proverbial piano can fall out of nowhere and kill you just like that. I could be sitting here talking to you and I can have a heart attack and fall over and die just like that and go to heaven. We don't know what a day will bring forth. But we do know what the future holds. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? But see, boast not thyself of tomorrow for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. We don't know what, I don't know what's going to happen today, and neither do you. You may think you do. You might even have a plan, and things might go according to your plan. But you don't truly know what's going to happen today. And see, in not knowing what's going to happen today, you need to cling to the one who does know what's going to happen today. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. 
Let another man praise thee, and not thine own mouth. A stranger, and not thine own lips. A stone is heavy, and the sand weighty. But a fool, who says in his heart there is no God, but a fool's wrath is heavier than them both. Mm -hmm. Wrath is cruel. And what do you think the time of Jacob's trouble is? God's wrath upon this earth seven years. Wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous. But who is able to stand before envy? Hmm. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Hmm. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Oh, but the kisses of an enemy. Hmm. The kisses of an enemy. They are deceitful. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not, knowest not what a day may bring forth. Now that is reiterated in James. James. And it's very significant in the book of James because the book of James is written specifically unto who? James chapter 1, verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, to the 12 tribes, okay? The book of James is specifically written for the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. A lot of it, that's proven to you in James chapter 2. James chapter 2, people who do not rightly divide the word of truth try to say that James chapter 2 doctrinally is for us today, which it is not. James chapter 2, uh, James, the book of James and James chapter 2 specifically, the book of James has everything to do with the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. Now there are doctrines within the book of James that do cross dispensational lines, yes, but in a whole, the book of James is written for the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. Especially when they know that that man of sin, the son of perdition, who stands in the third rebuilt temple, having the visage of the Roman Catholic Jesus, saying, I am God. Okay? And during that time period, the time of Jacob's trouble, the body of Christ is not on earth. Okay? The body of Christ is not on earth. Oh, there are going to be a lot of Christians. There are going to be a lot of Christians. Oh, yeah. Because that man of sin, the son of perdition, is in fact Satan's Christ. And Christ means anointing anointed one. And Satan himself is going to inhabit that man of sin, the son of perdition. I personally believe that it's going to happen when that man of sin, the son of perdition, gets a wound and then comes back to life. That's what, that I believe is when the son of perdition is going to be inhabited personally by Lucifer. Okay, that's my belief, but whatever. Okay, but in James chapter 4, and see, in the context of the time of Jacob's trouble, where there is no eternal security, where it's faith and works. You have to keep, uh, you, these are they who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So it's faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble. The only ones that have eternal security are the 144,000 Jews, Hebrews, of the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? Descended out of Shem. Only 144,000 Jews are eternally secure during the time of Jacob's trouble. The rest, it's all faith and works. Okay? No eternal security. Okay? And with the Gestapo out during that time, the time of Jacob's trouble, James chapter 4, verses 13 on to verse 17. Go to now. Ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city, and continue there a year, and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. Hmm. For what is your life? What is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then whew, vanisheth away. 
For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will. We shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings. Well, I'm, we're going to do this no matter what. And no one's going to be able to stop us. We know what's going to go on tomorrow. But now ye rejoice in your boasting. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And what is the ultimate good? To cleave unto our Lord Jesus Christ. To learn of him. Okay? Jesus Christ, God our Father, is all that is good. We are to cleave to him. Also, to look at Ecclesiastes. Now, the principle of this, of not knowing what is on the morrow, the principle of this, uh, boast not thyself of tomorrow, okay? You don't know what a day may bring forth. You know, Paul, having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Okay? But the principle of this is given to us quite well, I believe, in Ecclesiastes 11, verses 1 on to verse 6. Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven and also to eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. You see? If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And I, and I also enjoy this too, brother. And if the tree fall toward the south or toward the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. Okay, there it is. whoop -dee, there it is. Okay. He that observeth, observeth the wind shall not sow. And he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. I liken this unto someone who is a daydreamer. There are those who argue about, well, daydreaming isn't that bad, but yeah, you know, you can get a little too far into it because of something that Satan offers. This unreality of this real world that we live in. What is the one thing that Satan offers? He offers many things, actually, but he offers you fantasy to bring about to you something of fantasy in the real world. Isn't that something? Let's continue, though. As thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. Application. In the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold not thine hand. For thou knowest not whether shall prosper, either this or that, whether they both shall be alike good. Hmm. Now, this is not talking about reckless uh, abandonment. Okay? That's not what this is talking about. A lot of Christianity teaches this reckless abandonment in a way. Um, and we are to let our moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand, right? But in the Lord, we are to continue. We are to go on in courage in the Lord Jesus Christ until he give us a check or a rebuke or something like that. Okay? And how would you know that? You need to search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. The Lord will speak to you through the scriptures. <laughs> there was one that I used to know who was absolutely crazy, who believed that he has seen the Lord, but also that you actually hear the Lord speaking to you. 
I, I like this. You want to hear the Lord speak to you? Read the scriptures out loud. Okay? <laughs> but again, we don't know what's going to happen today. And we are to face this day in the confidence of our Lord Jesus Christ that we are to do as he would have us to do, as ambassadors unto him. Because we don't know. I don't know that if today will be the last day I'm alive and go to heaven and leave my wife behind. I don't know if today is my wife's last day. And neither do you. You may boast that, oh, I got today. <laughs> today is just going to be like uh, any other day and even better today. But you don't know. You truly do not know what's going to happen today. And not knowing what's going to happen today, Satan and all his devices comes in to distract you. Not knowing what's going to happen today and at any moment, something could happen and you could die and go to judgment. That ought to scare you. That ought to scare you. That ought to scare the hell out of you. But there again, as we hear, read here, he that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the cloud shall not reap. See, not knowing what is going to happen today ought to scare the hell out of you. So in order that, you will look to the Lord. Nearer, my God, to thee. Nearer to thee. You get it? So we, as the body of Christ, the church of the living God, though he slay me, yet I will trust in him. I can walk out my door today and if the proverbial piano falls on my head and takes me out, I'm going to be with the Lord. I'm going to go to heaven. And see, that's knowing that we are saved, eternally secure. Something that Catholicism can't offer you. Something that the Seventh-day Adventists can't offer you. But see, we know, we who are truly saved, we know that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We know this. We also know that we have eternal life. We know this. Why? Because thus saith the Lord in the scriptures. We know these things, but yet we don't know what's going to happen today. But see, we are warned of these things. Go to Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. Okay? Acts chapter 20, we want verses 28 on to verse 32. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the Christians. Whoops. To feed the church of God. Which he hath purchased with his own blood. The redemption of the purchased possession. The catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. Which surprisingly many of these Christians are against. For I know this that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock, false brethren, brought in, uh, brought in unawares. The falling away. The falling away which has been happening for a long time. But as we progress, as we progress, the falling away is getting worse and worse and worse. And as we discussed 
in the previous video of yesterday, which is on the other channel, um, <laughs> the falling away is not saved brethren getting messed up. The falling away are those who said they were of us, but they were never really of us. And the falling away makes them manifest that they were never of us, never really saved. That is going to increase more and more as we continue. And last year, we saw quite a bit of it, didn't we? Wow. What will become? What will become? Okay. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Because it's, all about me, 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 me. I, 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 me, 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 me. It's theater. And they want to be the star attraction. Therefore, watch. Don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. Watch. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God. That's very important. Like the wicked church building Christians that I encountered the one time at the farmer's market, that wicked lady, you know, told her what the Lord has me doing. And she's like, well, where are you sending them? I'm to the Lord through the scriptures. She's like, yeah, but they, they need to be, uh, you know, they need to go to a church building. You can go to hell, lady. I didn't say that, of course, but it's like, you can go to hell. That's Catholic. You got to go, you got to go find God in your church building. Yeah, that's Catholic. That's Catholic. And see, I commend you to God. To seek the Lord through his word, the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration, word of God, infallible word of God, the authorized version of the scriptures. Here, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. I commend you to God. And to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. And give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. So Paul warns us about this, you know, the infiltrators, the coadjutors. Also about the falling away is weaved in here. About those who they claim to be of us. But they never were saved. They never were. And you're, we have been seeing them being made manifest that they were never of us in the first place. That's the falling away, dear brethren. That's what the falling away is, okay? And how does this take shape with these people, these people that, um, um, for uh, verse 29, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. See, you and I as the church of the living God, we are to be salty. My father one time, because I refused to back down on certain things. Uh, yeah, I am I am King, King James only. This is this is God's word. This is the only one. Okay? My preference means nothing, okay? My preference means nothing. This is the only true word of God, the authorized version of the scriptures, okay? It's not that uh, I don't prefer the authorized version. Oh, <gasps> No, this is all there is. This is God's perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God. This is it. My preference means nothing, okay? 
means nothing. This is what God has preserved, the authorized version. This is the perfect word of God. You ask me, is there a perfect word of God? Or you most will, is there a perfect Bible? I was like, no. But the scriptures are perfect. Here, here are the scriptures. Okay? But see, we as ambassadors for Christ, having the ministry of reconciliation and having the word of reconciliation, we are to be salty. Salt burns. You ever get salt in your, in your fingertips or in a wound before? Salt burns. But salt is also a preservative. <laughs> Remember what? Lot's wife? How's that? The pres preservation, pre uh, her example of looking back is preserved in salt. Get it? Okay. Salt is a preservative. Salt is used, was, has been used in the preservative in food. Okay. It's a preservative also. And we are called to be salty. But see, for this I know, for I know this, excuse me, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. We are to be salty. And as I started to tell you, my father, one day trying to correct me for, you know, you know, <laughs> the Bibles are of uh, Satan. God is the author of the scriptures. Okay. He wanted to correct me. So he took two crackers, put them there, and he dumped salt all over the one. And he's like, which one would you want to eat? It's like, well, obviously the one with a little less salt. And what he was saying is too much salt is a bad thing. But we are called to be salty. See, had I under had I had I had done differently in that situation, oh boy, <laughs> oh boy, but I didn't. He's, he's my father, and I understood what he was trying to do, but uh, he was wrong. But he did that with the you know the visual stimuli thing you know here. Which one would you rather have? The cracker that has no salt on it or this one that's loaded in salt? Well, salt burns, but it's also a preservative. And what does Christianity do? Not only Christianity, but all these people that you see, this unreality of this real world that Satan offers you through social media, through the news, through entertainment, through the theater. How do they operate? What, what is the, how do they go about this? Very simple. Uh, Isaiah 30. Isaiah 30. <laughs> Very simple. Very simple. Isaiah 30, verses 9 on to verse 11. That this is a rebellious people. Lying children. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. And when we, as the Church of the Living God, salty as we be, come around telling people the truth because we don't want to see them go to hell, we see them running toward a cliff. And we're like, hey, whoa, stop, 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 stop. But no, they don't want to hear that. But what will they hear? Which say to the seers, See not. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. What right things? Things contained in Scripture. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceit. And yes, we're going to look at that in uh, 2 Timothy 4, but we're going to look at that later, towards the end of this, okay? Smooth things. Prophesy deceits. Why? Get you out of the way. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. 
no man cometh unto the Father but by him. Okay? Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. And, and like in the video that was yesterday, uh, Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, of course. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. Enter ye in at the straight gate. <laughs> For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. <laughs> because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that findeth. And of course, verse 15. Beware of false prophets. Which come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly they are ravening wolves. Smooth talkers. Like we have discussed before. Dragons speak. See, Satan wants to distract you of how a dragon speaks. The that old serpent, the devil, the dragon, Satan, okay? Satan, the red dragon in the book of Revelation, the dragon, okay? Satan, that old serpent, the devil, the accuser of the brethren, okay? Beelzebub, okay? The, the devil, Lucifer, all right? A dragon doesn't speak to you in profanity and cursing, even though they are loaded with that. Oh, Oh, even so, here's, here, okay, here's how a, a dragon, here's how a devil speaks. Speaks in smooth things, but here's, here's an even uh, greater verse on that. Psalm 55, there's one verse. Psalm 55, one verse. Psalm 55, verse 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than but woe is in his heart. His words were softer than oil. Yet were they drawn swords. See, Satan and even Christianity wants you to believe that someone who speaks gruffly, someone that is salty, is of the devil. Now, granted, there, there are. There are profane people like, you know, like, uh, for example, George Carlin. Okay, that guy's burning alive in hell right now as we speak. Okay? All right. George Carlin actually had a lot of good insight of things that were going on, but he, he's burning in hell. Okay? And he was a profane, foul-speaking person. Of the devil, absolutely. Absolutely. But see, Satan and a lot of Christianity wants to distract you and say that devils speak like that, and they do. But see, a true devil that speaks as a dragon speaks smoothly, softly. We've talked about this before. Never, never raises their voice above a whisper. Always patting you on the back as you're running toward a cliff. Encourage you on your way to hell. When, when you need to be rebuked. It's like, it's okay, we're not judging you. No, and the only time you see fire in those types is when it comes to those of us who are salty. See, the world is in the hand of Satan because of judgment. Satan is the little g-god of this world. Okay, you read about that in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Go there, of course. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, <clears throat> verses 1 on verse 4. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. 
God loves you. If you work hard, you do all this stuff, you can be a millionaire like that devil Mr. Beast. That this unreal reality that is given to you through the news, through YouTube, through Hollywood, through advertisements, okay? And then you walk out your door and you see people trying to put into the real world that which is given to them on television. Have you, have you not noticed that? Hmm. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, walking the talk commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Walking your talk. Being a living example. Living your life according to the scriptures. Okay? But if our gospel be hid, the true gospel, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds. Blinded the minds. Oh, they see a whole lot. But their minds are blinded. Why? In whom the God of this world, Satan, Lucifer, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine onto them. And also, too, you've got to remember in Ephesians chapter 6, <laughs> uh, verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, uh, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, the esoteric, the uh, uh, elites that run things, the elite people, the esoteric people that are given to you through the social media, you know, those newscasters that are so plastic looking, the thumbnail, that devil that's on that thumbnail. That is the reality that Satan wants you to accept. And to try to take that which is false and put it into practice in the real world. Perfect example. Look at all the cosmetic plastic surgeries that are happening nowadays, okay? Thin as in. Do you realize that Satan through the Jesuit order and through the media of the Jesuit order, all of media is controlled by the Jesuit order, they're telling you what to think. They're telling you what to believe. They're telling you what is good. And most of you are gobbling it right up, aren't you? Zechariah chapter 11. Zechariah chapter 11. The little G God of this world is Satan. Okay? He's the one who is allowed to run this world. Why? Because of judgment. Okay? We're going we're to touch on that. But, okay? Zechariah chapter 11, verses 15 on to verse 17. And the Lord said unto me, Take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd. Fool says in his heart, there is no God. A foolish shepherd behaves as if there is no God. Okay? Foolish shepherd. For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land, which shall not visit those that be cut off, neither shall seek the, seek the young one, nor heal that that is broken, nor feed that that standeth still. But he shall eat the flesh of the fat, and tear their claws in pieces. So, Satan is the little G-God of this world. Satan is allowed to be the little G-God of this world. Why? Because of judgment against this world. Okay? God, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, is in control of all things. But see, he has allowed Satan to be worshipped as the God of this world. To bring those of you who want Satan and what he offers you into damnation.
Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. And you see this, you know, the right eye covered. Remember some of you, my countrymen, about um, uh, Trump with um, Make America Great Hat and his right eye was darkened. Uh, look at the Star Wars things where their right eye is darkened. Okay, yeah, you see that all over. You do, okay? Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean dried up and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. And who is this foolish shepherd which the Lord raised up, allows to be in control of things for judgment? Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verses 5 and on to verse 7. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. All the kingdoms of the world. What do you, what do you think when you're browsing through YouTube, when you're surfing your channels? What do you think Satan is doing to you? In that little fantasy world that he wants to make the real world? Hmm? What do you think he's doing? Think about it there, man. You're surfing through YouTube. You're surfing through your channels, right? And you see all this grandeur and glory. The theater. What do you think he's doing? And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and whomsoever I will, I give it. See, the hypnotic nature, the mind-controlled nature of what is social media, which is television, okay? Which is entertainment, amusement, okay? Satan is giving you all these things, showing you all the world and moments of time, especially here on YouTube, where you can literally see exotic places. You can see some of these putzes these YouTube celebrities who make literally millions off of YouTube. Literally millions, like that devil on the thumbnail. Okay? We show you all these exotic things. And think about it. What, what is being told to you? All this power will I give thee. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Three times the charge. <laughs> Excuse me. All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will I give it. And as you're surfing or doing whatever, you're seeing all these images flash before you. Satan is telling you, look what I offer you. But there's a catch. Verse 7. If thou, therefore, will worship me, all shall be thine. All that stuff that he's offering you on YouTube and on the social media. You know, like I mentioned George Carlin. He once said that you need to see things as it's being presented to you. Theater. You also have to keep in mind the suspension of disbelief. Link will be provided in the description box about the suspension of disbelief, okay? Which is a main aspect of drama, theater. you got to remember the world that is being presented to you through YouTube, through social media platforms, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Wastebook, the news media. It's theater. It's theater. While the real world is foreclosing on your home. 
while the real world is telling you, unless you get stabbed, you ain't going to work. The real world is telling you, unless you have a good enough diploma or a college degree, you can't get a job. Do you know that here in Illinois specifically, and uh, Illinois, <laughs> that in order to flip a burger at McDonald's, you have to be a licensed food handler? Yeah. Yeah. You have to be health certified in order to flip a burger. And that's something. And that's something. <laughs> And of course, what will become? We don't know. We don't know what will become. You know, uh, January 1st, for example, begins the whole slew of these new laws that they're going to bring in on January 1st. What will become? Let's see, Satan is offering you fantasy while the real world is crashing down around you. And see, we're also warned, we're also warned in Deuteronomy. All things that were written aforetime were written for our learning, instruction in righteousness. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 25 and 26. The graven images of their gods. And think about that, people. Gods, little g. Look at the entertainment industry. Look at the YouTube celebrities. How many of you want what they've got? How many of you would kill to have that devil's money, right? How many of you would kill to have that fame and notoriety? Fall down and worship Satan and all will be thine. The graven images of their God shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. And that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor extreme hatred. Abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. What Satan offers you is a cursed thing to drive you away from the Lord. And see, in Isaiah chapter 3, Isaiah chapter 3, <laughs> because isn't it interesting that you've got these people Old people wanting to look like these, as they call them, millennials. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. Isaiah chapter 3, verses 12 on to verse 15. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. Now, right away, when you think about those who lead you, what do you think about? You think about our political leaders. Think about this. They are just the extension of those that are leading you through the social media, like the newscasters, like the entertainers on YouTube and other uh, social platforms. Think about it. Think about it. The, pol the politicians, which are actors themselves, are just an extension. You're being programmed and trained through one of Satan's devices, the media. Now, there are, like for example, um, YouTube here, there are those of the Church of the Living God here on YouTube that preach and teach rightly according to the Scriptures. Yes, there are. But that is the minority. And the algorithm that is of Satan himself persecutes, actively persecutes True Brethren's channels. I'll have you know, 
since December 11th on to this very day. YouTube algorithm, not the people, not man, but machine, has every day since this, almost every day, okay? Uh, today is the 31st. Since December 11th, uh, what is that, uh, 20 days? So 19 out of 20 days, YouTube, the algorithm, has done something to a video on this channel. Something, whether it's remove views, likes, dislikes, like I've discussed before, um, I really find it difficult that like my good friend from England would suddenly undislike a video. That, that doesn't happen. From a video that had nine dislikes to go to zero all of a sudden, that, that doesn't work. Likes, yeah, okay, someone can unlike a video, but usually the dislikes... Uh, that doesn't happen when like a video has nine dislikes and then the very uh, at the magic hours but uh, San Bruno Cal uh, San Bruno California time between what is it uh, six uh, which uh, we're two hours ahead here in Illinois between six and nine or six and eight San Bruno, California time, which would be uh, 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. My time is when the algorithm does a th its thing. It removes things, okay? So all of a sudden, a video that has nine dislikes and then somewhere in that magic, in those magical hours between uh, their San Bruno time, um, six and eight, eight, nine, ten, uh, or six and nine, their time, a video that had nine dislikes all of a sudden have zero. Okay? <laughs> okay? But yes, that happens. It's, it's happening. It'll happen even tonight. Now that I've said that, they probably won't because the machines that are running things that are being used of the devil to deceive you um, have a vindictive nature. Have you noticed that? While a machine just runs programs, machines have a vindictive nature. Isn't that interesting? But see, <laughs> they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy past. Who's really leading you? Are politicians? No, they're not. Satan through the Jesuit order is leading you through things like this, through the big stars, showing you the world in a moment of time by you flipping the channels or scrolling up and down. And all the superstars that he's showing you, they're the ones that are leading you. The Lord standeth up to judge, the Lord standeth up to plead. And standeth to judge the people. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people. And the princes thereof. For ye have eaten up the vineyard. The spoil of the poor is in your houses. What mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces. And grind the faces of the poor. Saith the Lord God of hosts. They that lead thee cause thee to err. And what does it say? <laughs> Children are your oppressors and women rule over you. Mm. And go to Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 10. Leviticus chapter 10. I want you to see this. Leviticus chapter 10. Leviticus chapter 10. We want verses 8 unto verse 11. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine nor strong drink, thou nor thy sons with thee, when ye go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations. Now, for our instruction in righteousness, okay, God has no problem with drinking alcohol. It's when you drink it to excess, that's the problem. But the wine of the wrath of her fornication. 
Who is offering you wine? Who is offering you intoxicating wine with the wrath of her fornication? Oh, that be Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, the abomination and abominations of the earth. Roman Catholicism, the Jesuit order, which is controlled, run, and operated by Satan himself. Think about that. You think, mull that over in your head a little bit as you go to scroll through. You know, if it isn't for a brother's video or a hymn, uh, I, I, we listen to a lot of the hymns of the brethren, like Joyful Noise and stuff like that. But if it isn't, ha if it has nothing to do with a brother, usually myself personally, I try to stay away from YouTube. And what I, my, my problem is the shorts. Uh, a pet, uh, watching cats do, uh, cats and dogs do stupid things. Or watching food videos, okay? But see, they're in, again, the snare of it, okay? Because the next thing you know, uh, next thing I know, I've wasted 10 minutes watching a cat run up a wall and do a backflip. Or watching some Asian guy cook some very delicious food, and this makes me, it's, you know, you waste your time. Yeah, it's 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 almost as if you're engaging in that wine that is being offered to you from Mystery Babylon. See, anyone can fall for it, and that ye may put difference between holy and unholy, and between unclean and clean, and that ye may teach the children of Israel all the statutes which the Lord has spoken unto them by the hand of Moses. And the church of the living God, we are ambassadors for Christ, having the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation. And this is going to be a video here in, uh, coming in the future. But that uh, the teachers... We, as the Church of the Living God, are to live as the example for the lost world. But see, Christianity has ingratiated itself into the lost world. You got to be like the lost to win the lost, right? They're neck deep in it. So, those who lead thee cause thee to err. When the Church of the Living God ought to be the example. What happens? Carnality. I am of Paul. I am of Apollos. And it's just going to continually get worse, brethren. Go to Hosea 5. Hosea. Hosea chapter 5. Hosea is right after the book of Daniel. Hosea chapter 5. Verses 1 on verse 8. Hear ye this, O priests, and hearken ye, house of Israel, and give ye ear, O house of the king, for judgment is toward you, because ye have been a snare on Mizpah, and a net spread upon Tabor, and the revolters are profound to make slaughter. The revolters. What's being fed you? What you're seeing? And what are they? They're profound to make slaughter. Though I have been a rebuker of them all. I know Ephraim, and Israel is not hid from me. For now, O Ephraim, thou committest whoredom, and Israel is defiled. They will not frame their doings to turn unto their God. For the spirit of whoredoms is in the midst of them. And they have not known the Lord. And the pride of Israel doth testify to his face. Therefore shall Israel and Ephraim fall in their iniquity. Judah also shall fall with them. They shall go with their flocks and with their herds to seek the Lord. But they shall not find him. He hath withdrawn himself from them. Put this in context for us here in America. America that is far gone away from the Lord. 
far gone away and isn't going to go back. I, I do not believe that America was ever a godly nation. I do not believe that at all. Ever. Ever. I don't believe America was ever a godly nation. The Church of the Living God was in this nation. And because of the Church of the Living God, blessings came. Absolutely. But America in herself, a godly nation? Never. Never. Never was. Never will be. Never will be. You know, when it says in the book of Jeremiah, pray not thou for this people. Why? Because they've made their choice. They have dealt treacherously against the Lord, for they have begotten strange children. Now shall a month devour them with their portions. <laughs> Blow ye the cornet in Gebeah, and the trumpet in Ramah. Cry aloud at Bethaven, after thee, O Benjamin. We're sounding the warning, but people don't want to hear it. What will become? And then, of course, you go to Romans chapter 13. Okay? Romans chapter 13. And a lot of Christians, <laughs> when it comes to Romans chapter 13, will only read a small portion of this in order and say like, well, you, we should be praying for Kamala Harris and Smoking Joe. We should be praying for Pritzker here in Illinois. You need to be praying for the, the government. A government that is against God and is run by the Jesuit order and is, um, yeah, we're supposed to pray for that. Romans chapter 13. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Absolutely, that is truth. Absolutely. You know that wacko macaroni guy in France who that Jeff Grider thinks is the son of perdition? Somebody need to smack Jeff Grider upside his head because that man seriously believes that macaroni guy from France is the son of perdition, okay? He's ordained of God. Oh, yeah. For judgment. For judgment. Smoking Joe, Kamala Harris. They're ordained of God for judgment against this wicked nation. And see, 2023, my American countrymen, coming upon us, okay? And in 2024 is when the Jesuits will select our next president. Whoever is going to be worse for this nation is, going, is who they're going to select. Personally, I don't believe that you're going to see Smoke and Joe return. Um, could it be Trump? Maybe. I personally believe that it's very possible that we can see our very first female president. And once we see a female president, the nations that rightly hate us already, when they see a female president, we're doomed. We're doomed. But yes, the powers that be are ordained of God. And the powers that, are, that, are, that be today that are put there by the Jesuits are there for judgment against this wicked nation of America or whatever nation you are in. That Trudeau guy in Canada, okay? All right? King Charles. For judgment. For judgment. Okay? For judgment. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Now most Christians stop at that, and this is truth. They stop at this. So see, you're supposed to pray for them. 
Okay, and what do they do? They go to 1 Timothy. They go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. Verses 1 on verse 6. I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, huh? and for all that are in authority. Why? That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. So, we are to pray for them that we may do as we are commanded in Scripture to be ambassadors for Christ in our nation, having the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation. Okay? That's why we are to pray for those who are in authority. But what happens when you got those like our politicians who are controlled by the Jesuit order? Okay? All right? Are we to pray for them who are controlled by the Vatican? No. No. See, we are to pray for these people that we may live a peaceable and godly uh, life in all honesty, okay? So that we may be ambassadors for Christ. But the persecution that comes here on YouTube and other platforms... You walking outside your door trying to pass out tracks, okay? People don't want to hear it. And God has long been taken out of the educational system. Yeah, educational system. When government is controlled by the devil. But let, let, let's continue. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Take that one, Mr. Calvin. All men to be saved. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. The woman, the Roman Catholic Mary. The man, Christ Jesus. Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Now go back to Romans chapter 13. Okay. So we are to pray for those who are in authority that we may leave, live a peaceable and quiet life in all godliness and honesty. Living as, as examples. Okay. That's why. That's why. But that is slowly being gnawed away at and picked at in whatever nation you are in. But see, there's another aspect here. Let's continue reading in Romans chapter 13. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then, wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon them, upon him that doeth evil. The police. The police. Okay? While the heads are all wicked, the police are there to keep the peace. Okay? You go in, you steal something from a store, cops are called, you go to jail. Okay? You kill someone, you go to jail. Okay? You beat up someone, you go to jail. Okay? All right? All right? That's what that's, you know, that's what that's there for. The police are there to keep peace. Okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. But see, the heads are politicians who are run by the Vatican who want to destroy this nation and want to have cease the true living God in America and in whatever nation you are in. Are we to pray for them? My prayer, our prayer is, Lord, keep these devils off our back that you may be made manifest today. 
and the peace officers out there that are there to keep the peace. Pray for some of them. Pray for them. Yes, there are corrupt police officers, absolutely. But see, they're there for what? For he is the minister of God to thee for good. Someone steals from you, you call the police. Hmm? Someone's going to shoot you, you call the police. Someone uh, assaults you, you call the police. Okay? Verse 5. Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For this, for, for this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Okay? For example, we get invaded by a foreign nation. We hope and pray that our military is going to defend us against the invasion of a foreign nation. But see, we have already been invaded by a foreign nation. The Vatican, Rome. Not with a physical army with guns and bullets, but the army of the media. And that's something. You know, the politicians who sit in their suit and ties. That's run by the Vatican. But you know, you got John, the police officer out there, who's trying to keep the peace. Those are the ones you pray for. Those are the ones you pray for. And if anything, for our governments, that they may stay off our back. That the Lord may be made manifest. Okay? That's what we pray for, brethren. That's what we pray for. Now, now let's look at an example of this, okay? For example, sodomite marriage is legal in some states. Abortion has been left up to the individual states now. Hence, to bring the states uh, to war with one another, okay? You know, that Masonic document, the uh, Constitution... <laughs> which is a guideline, not applicable, which is circumvented, okay? Means nothing nowadays. Means nothing. But go to Leviticus chapter 26, okay? Leviticus chapter 26. We want verses 13, uh, 3 under 13. Leviticus chapter 26, 3 under verse 13. If ye walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. And your, threth and your threshing shall reach unto the vintage, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time. And ye shall eat your bread to the full, and dwell in your land safely. Now, doctrinally, specifically, this is for the Jewish people. But if a nation would turn unto the Lord, Okay? But see, the nations are given over onto the God of this world. Okay? All right? And I will give peace in the land, and ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. And ye shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. And five of you shall chase an hundred, and an hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight, and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. For I will have respect unto you, and make you fruitful, and multiply you, and establish my covenant with you. And ye shall eat old store, and bring forth the old because of the new. And I will set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not abhor you. And I will walk among you, and I will, and will be your God, and ye shall be my people. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that ye should not be their bondmen. And I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. Now, specifically, that is talking about the Jewish people, the, the nation of the Hebrews, okay? Doctrinally, this is not for us at all. But to instruct us in righteousness, it has very significant meaning, okay? We do what God says, okay? 
Even, even people who are lost, who follow a godly principle, okay, it would be well with them. But see, there again, you can't have God's commandments without God himself, okay? And we've talked about this before. You can't exclude the commandments of God from God himself, okay? Which is being, which is attempted to be, which is being done here in America, okay? God knows what is best. God knows only what is good. But see, so many want to, through philosophy and vain deceit, want to subtract God from his commandments. And you can't do it, buddy! But see, what happens to a nation? What happens when people forget God? Okay? This is our instruction in righteousness. Ezekiel chapter 20. Ezekiel chapter 20. Ezekiel chapter 20. Verses 24 and 20, on to 26. Because they had not executed my judgments, but despised my statutes, and had polluted my Sabbaths, and their eyes were after their father's idols. Sabbaths. Now, doctrinally, this is speaking, for, this is for a different dispensation. We're looking at this for our instruction in righteousness. Okay, despite what that wacko from Bible flock box wants you to believe, we do not have to keep the Sabbath today to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Okay, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. This is our instruction in righteousness. Okay, let's continue. Wherefore, I gave them also statutes that were not good and judgments whereby they should not live. Oh boy. And I polluted them in their own gifts, in that they caused to pass through the fire all that opened at the womb, that I might make them desolate, to the end that they might know that I am the Lord. And you read about that in Amos chapter 4, I believe that is. Or 4 or 6 or something like that. Where it's like, and I did all these things unto you, yet ye turned not unto me. What is... What's the New Testament equivalent to this? <laughs> well, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Verses 10 on to verse 12. Okay? And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish. Why? Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So the Lord will send them strong delusion. Destroy you in your gifts. Look at America. Look at all the gifts that America has enjoyed over the, uh, over the years, right? And those very gifts have destroyed this nation. And are destroying it. And that's not just America. Look at England. Okay? Look at other nations. Because there is not a nation on earth that is of God. There is God's nation of Israel, which are not following him. Because if they were, <laughs> they would all be of the church of the living God. But that comes later. It's Romans chapter 1, brethren, people. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verses 29 on to verse 32. The world outside your door, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisper. Backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. 
Misery loves company. <laughs> what will become? What will become, brethren? We don't know what's going to happen today. But we know what's coming. You don't know if you're going to live or die today. You don't know if you're going to eat today. We don't know if we're going to pay our bills today. We don't know what's going to happen today. But we know what's coming. And knowing what's coming, you ought to prepare yourself. You ought to get right with the Lord and get saved while you still can. But see, Satan distracts you. He shows you all the kingdoms of the world in a moment in time through media. And try, and you people want to bring that world that Satan offers you through the media into the real world. And it ain't working too good, is it? Is it? Unless, of course, you fall down and worship him, all will be thine. We don't know what's going to happen today. But we know what is coming. 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. This is 1 on to verse 5. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, capital S, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. You can't kill your conscience. You can sear it, but you can't kill it. Forbidding to marry and con commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. The dietary restrictions that were under the Old Testament were lifted away in this, the New Testament. Here it is. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Now, can, uh, forbidding to marry and con commanding to abstain from meats. You right away think of Catholicism, you know, um, celibacy and Lent. Or don't eat meat on a certain day. But also, okay, also Islam. Islam, okay? Islam. Uh, Buddhism and certain sects of Hinduism forbidding to marry and stuff like that. So, certain of Taoism and uh, stuff like that as well, okay? Yea, hath God said. Today, dear friend, you can eat all the pork you want. You can eat the shrimp, the crustaceans, all you want. Why? For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. The dietary restrictions that were in the Old Testament are ipso facto not in effect today. Okay? Okay? If you don't want to eat those, that's a different story. See, we're not supposed to judge one another in what we eat, okay? Paul talks about that in Romans chapter 14, okay? I believe it's Romans 14, okay? You want to stay kosher? You want to not eat pork? Fine. But see, for you today to tie that into a salvific thing, uh, no. Which a lot of people still do. I think some of y'all who do that just need to eat uh, yourself some bacon. Shut up. But also now, go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verses 1 on to verse 7. This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. We know this is going to happen. We know this is happening. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, 
despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. <laughs> For of this sort are they which creep in the houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And look at verses 12 and 13. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And this is happening today. This is happening today. We're seeing this fulfilled before our very eyes. We don't know what's going to happen today, but we know what is coming because it's basically here, isn't it? And chapter 4, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 under verse 5. What do we do? I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Because you don't know what a day may bring, bring forth. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure a sound doctrine, but after their own lusts, Shall they heap to themselves <laughs> teachers having itching ears? And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned on to fables. Fable, that today you got to keep the commandments. Uh, today you got to keep the Sabbath. Today you, 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 you can't eat pork. A fable. God loves you unconditionally. God's not angry with you. You're not supposed to fear the Lord. Just believe. All these things will I give you. If you fall down and worship me, I will be thine. Fables. What will become? What will become? Philippians chapter 3, and we will be done with this video. Like I said, this is a short video. Got, got quite a few videos coming here, but uh, this is, you know, it is New Year's, and, you know, you don't know what's going to happen today, but we know what's coming in the future. A lot of it is here already. What's coming is the redemption of the purchased possession. But at any given moment, you can meet your end. Are you prepared for that? Philippians chapter 3, verses 7, on to the close of the chapter. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. We die daily. Dead to the world. Dead to ourselves. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained. Either were already perfect. Sinlessly perfect, right? See, the perfect that Paul talks about is perfect in heart. Here, perfect. 
We're not perfect yet. Our hearts are perfect toward the Lord, yes. But as far as perfect as without sin, no. Not yet. Uh, when we get our resurrected body, no sin, okay? Yeah. Okay? Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Wait, I skipped. Excuse me. Verse 12. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That's what we do, brethren. You can't fix what was yesterday. And don't let these devils drag you down and try to bog you down in the past. But press forward. Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect. Contradiction? No. Perfect in heart. Okay? Perfect in heart. And a perfect heart is a broken, contrite heart. Okay? One that belongs unto the Lord. And someone who says, God knows my heart, uh, that's an excuse. That's an excuse. Someone who says that is seeking to justify sin. Let us therefore as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. But do you want to hear it? I hope so. Nevertheless, where are two we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. Again, we is the church of the living God. Okay? We're going to see so much political jangling going on here in America. It's disgusting. But we as the church of the living God, as all Chades is breaking forth around us, live your life according to the scripture. Be that ambassador unto the Lord Jesus Christ having the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation. Walk your talk. We all mess up. We all fall. Safe people don't fall away. Safe people don't fall away. We don't know what's going to happen today, but what will become? For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, the cross of Christ, which is death, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, flesh, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall change our vile body. This is coming. That it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. We don't know what's going to happen today, but we know what's coming. The falling away is in full swing and it's just going to get worse and worse. We're going to see such political jangling and theatrics. Brethren, when you see this world presented to you through the media outlets and whatnot, you've got to see it as it's being presented to you. Theater. Fake. The real world is outside your door. And that's what we are. God is the God of the real world. 
but the little g god of this world is the god of a unreal reality that he wants you to implement. And we are to get nearer to our God. We're going to see some crazy things coming up this year, I believe. Sooner or later, we, I believe, we are going to see an implosion of this thing called King James Bible believing Christianity. I believe we're going to see an implosion in that. I really do. I really do. Because there are so many that are not of us, that claim to be of us, who adhere to the authorized version of the scriptures. Sooner or later, this thing is just going to implode, fall in on itself. Nearer my God to thee. That's the point. Uh, are you saved? You want to know what it takes, what, what you got to do to be saved? Be a link in the description box. This, this year we have seen so many blessings and so many wonderful things that the Lord hath done. And thank you. Thank you. But we don't know what tomorrow brings, even though we know what the future holds. Are you ready? That's going to be it for this video. I'm going to get this uploaded. This is going to be on the main channel. <laughs> the main channel that ever since December 11th has been being attacked every single, virtually every single day. Thank you unto all of you who pray for us, for all of you who have helped us, even those of you who have and do no more. Thank you. We love you. We'll see you in the next video.